So the next speaker is uh, Dr. Iliaxi Majika. Iliaxi is a theorist in uh, material science and in a particular development of catalysts for heterogeneous catalyst cells. He studied uh, chemistry at the uh, Belarus State University in Minsk, and later uh, he had uh, uh, and also at University of Bochum in Germany. Eventually he got his uh, PhD from PSU and also um, the University of Bonn. He worked in Germany as a postdoc for, for a while, including in the uh, uh, Max Planck uh, Society Institute, and later uh, at uh, so, uh, University of, uh, Technical uh, University of Berlin, uh, where okay. he was a senior research, uh, uh, researcher. Uh, currently he's in between jobs, and he's going to tell us about AI-driven research for new catalyst material. Please, the floor is yours. So, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, yes, I'm going to uh, tell you about theoretical AI-driven search for <clears throat> new catalytic materials. So basically, uh, I will tell you about our strategy for the search of new catalytic materials, which uh, is based on several uh, components. First of all, these are the calculations from the first principles of quantum mechanics. Uh, so we um, actually follow a bit different strategy from the very first speaker today. We at first try to understand everything on atomic level, and then based on that, based on atomic level, then we do further predictions. So we also use M uh, ML and AI methodology to accelerate our search and hopefully consistent experimental data if it is available. And uh, next I will uh, tell you about the application of uh, these methods in um, three issue projects. One of them is CO2 conversion, hydrogenation reactions, and oxidative coupling of methane. So basically about CO2 conversion, the main idea is to convert CO2 to some synthetic fuels, like uh, methanol or hydrocarbons, which can be then used, again producing CO2, and then CO2 will be again uh, used for producing these fuels, closing in such a way the loop. The point is that we need a good um, catalytic materials for such a conversion of CO2. Kind of the most straightforward way is to perform the high throughput screening of many, many materials and find which of them is kind of the best for our purposes. But this implies um, either catalytic studies for each material or uh, extensive uh, calculations, which makes it unfeasible. Instead, we can uh, calculate so-called fingerprints or descriptors. Uh, these are some properties of those materials which would immediately tell us if given materials is potentially good or not for, for example, CO2 conversion. So since uh, the uh, conversion of CO2 starts from adsorption of CO2 molecule, so we considered as potential descriptors the properties of uh, CO2 adsorption. So uh, first of all, this is adsorption energy, uh, implying well known in chemical community Sabatier principle, which tells us that um, adsorption uh, energy should not be too low in order uh, that we could um, capture CO2 molecule. But on the other hand, it should not be too strongly bound, so otherwise the catalyst will be poisoned by CO2. Uh, other uh, features as uh, candidate descriptors are geometric properties such as decrease of OCO angle. So upon adsorption of CO2, the uh, linear molecule gets bent. And uh, the smaller is this OCO angle, the more activated it is. And uh, elongation of CO bond length, uh, which is kind of straightforward. So the larger bond, uh, CO bond R, bonds are, the weaker they are, the more easier they can undergo further chemical uh, transformations. Uh, so we considered uh, in this work uh, oxide materials because they are stable and com both compositionally and under different temperatures. So with different stoichiometries, so both ternaries and binaries, so uh, about 70 oxide materials with uh, twice more surfaces and 255 different absorption sites, centers of CO2. Everything was done, uh, was calculated using FHI-AIMS code uh, within a density functional theory. 
which is kind of the main working horse uh, in um, this uh, in a community of people who are doing atomic simulations. First, uh, the question is, uh, are they uh, this Osio Engel and uh, Osio Bonte X correlated? If yes, then why do we need to consider them separately? So we checked this and found that, uh, well, in quite many cases they are, but there is a group of materials in which CO2 is absorbed asymmetrically and uh, for which uh, there is no correlation between angle and bone distance. So we considered these two potential descriptors separately. Now, uh, in order to find which of them is good, which are bad, and how basically uh, to be able to predict uh, these materials, we used here some data mining technique, uh, which is called subgroup discovery. So subgroup discovery allows us to find the subgroups of data based on uh, their unique distribution compared to the whole sampling, okay? So the subgroups are defined by conjunctions of propositions, like some X property of our materials is larger than certain threshold, other properties lower than threshold. Uh, they are, subgroups are generated uh, with a Monte Carlo algorithm and their uniqueness is estimated uh, with so-called quality function, which contains the size of the uh, subgroup and uh, shift. So, uh, for example, if we consider uh, osseo angles, we want that uh, materials would be, uh, have angles uh, the further the best from 180 degrees, which is in gas phase, meaning that they are very well activated. Also, uh, could be additional term, which is uh, responsible for Sabatier principle. Such a way, um, this method kind of uh, would uh, first uh, sh show us uh, which uh, our candidate descriptor, or the angle or zero bond distance is the best. And on the other hand, based on these rules of subgroups, this could uh, enable us further search of new materials. Okay, uh, so here basically, um, just short uh, slide about uh, which uh, features uh, make our propositions. So because we don't uh, finally want to calculate for all uh, materials, so this how CO2 behaves. We want to predict this based on some relatively inexpensive features. So these features are features of atoms, which form our oxide, features of um, oxide surfaces, and um, specific features of adsorption size. So which can be more easily calculated than um, the CO2 molecule absorbed on top of them. First, we did our uh, subgroup uh, discovery analysis for OCO angles. So we obtained some subgroup. So here's with the black color uh, is a distribution of uh, uh, density of samples for the whole sampling, and here the red color is our subgroup. But checking the absorption energies, we found so that this is, uh, uh, in most of cases, far away from our Sabatier principle constraint, uh, which is shown in a, a blue line, meaning that they should be average, uh, like in this uh, region, but they are not, which means that uh, the materials uh, in this subgroup, uh, for which kind of uh, deliver small OCO angles, um, they are not very good for uh, conversion of carbon dioxide because they uh, undergo um, formation uh, of uh, strongly bound carbonate so that finally we have carbonate instead of oxide and this is already some different material. It's not our catalyst anymore. Only if we uh, enforce the fulfillment of Sabatier principle by some trick then we get smaller subgroup in which uh, angles are small, but on the uh, other hand, um, um, Sabatier principle is fulfilled and pro probably this is better. And we also learned that physics of certain absorption on uh, such cases is different from previous case. So here we have additional chemical bonds between oxygens and surface. Now, what about uh, cell bond elongation? So we did uh, both cases. Uh, uh, with uh, and without enforcement of uh, Sabatier principle, and we obtain the same subgroup in all, all, all of these cases, which means that um, the elongation of OCO, of, uh, sorry, CO bond lengths, it automatically satisfies uh, this, our constraint, Sabatier principle, and probably this is uh, what we are looking uh, for. 
So here's basically the, uh, how this subgroup uh, is defined, the selector. But uh, everything we have done so far is just hypothesis. Maybe uh, good, uh, maybe not. And in order to be uh, sure, we checked the literature for our materials, uh, which contain uh, absorption sites in uh, this subgroup or other subgroup, and both of them or any of them. And we found that, yeah, uh, some of those materials have been studied um, in, um, for uh, CO2 conversion and have been found to be yeah, active. With that, we conclude that, right, we, are, we have found the right descriptor, especially this elongation of CO bond length for uh, activation of CO2 with its further conversion. And based on that, we proposed kind of new, several new materials, catalytic materials. Right, before to uh, go to next um, uh, project, I, I will introduce you shortly the method, uh, other method which we used. This is called uh, Schoen Dependent Screening and Specifying Operator, or shortly CISO. So this is a symbolic regression method. And uh, I would say this is sort of a generator of simple physics laws. It means like uh, here's Coulomb law or Newton's law. It means that if we have, for example, point charges and uh, distance between of them, then uh, CISO would be, uh, I would say, the right method which would uh, generate you probably in one shot, uh, this Coulomb law. So CISO actually operates with, uh, it generates actually complex features with some mathematical operators, like algebraic operators, also trigonometric. It means that we have, for example, features A, B, C, and CISO generates some combinations, A plus B, B divided by C, or more complicated combinations. And then the models in CISO are linear models of those uh, complex features. So D1, uh, D2, Di are these complex features. So the search is done uh, using uh, complex sensing analysis, so this is clear, and uh, plus L0 regularization. Uh, technically, it is done in a step-by-step -step manner, so that uh, uh, in each step we find the new D dimensionality, and until uh, all uh, dimensionality are dimensionalities are found. And uh, the, the uh, advantage of this is that in such a way we can find uh, quasi-orthogonal uh, solutions in contrast to, for example, to L1 regularization to Lasso. Uh, this system contains several hyperparameters uh, like dimensionality, so how many uh, nonlinear coefficients we have also complexity, how complex are our uh, features, which can be found using grid search. But also uh, another types of height of parameters are features set and set of mathematical operators, which we can find using a recently developed uh, approach based on genetic algorithm. So basically I would say uh, this is quite a uh, usual genetic algorithm, uh, but um, uh, it contains some peculiarities uh, such as we don't preserve any generations, so uh, everything is selected from the whole pool of um, candidate, candidates, uh, candidate configurations, uh, and in such a way we um, try to escape falling into a local minimum. So we find the global minimum, the most um, the descriptor, uh, the model with the lowest cross-validation error. And testing uh, this algorithm on some test systems, uh, we observed that uh, it gives us improvement up to 20% compared to um, some other methods like Monte Carlo or uh, when we operate all uh, features in one shot. Okay, right, uh, since uh, the session is called uh, AI for Hydrogen, so I will present uh, how we used CISO for the search of new single atom alloy catalysts for hydrogenation reactions. So this was done uh, mainly by my uh, former colleague, John Kan Han. And here we considered a uh, single atom uh, catalyst. What is it? It is that, for example, we have some metallic material and, uh, and, uh, which is host and one guest atom. And this guest atom, it makes the whole chemistry. So in this case, it, uh, the chemistry is uh, the hydrogenation, so it uh, should activate hydrogen, which then 
would hydrogenate some other molecules on the surface. Basically, the main descriptors um, for these reactions are binding energy of hydrogen, dissociation bar barrier of H2 molecule, and also segregation energy, which means that this atom, uh, single atom, should be stable. So it should not diffuse somewhere inside uh, of, the, of our materials, uh, but should stay on the surface uh, with hydrogen and uh, make chemistry. So uh, just I should say that um, basically in theoretical hydrogen catalysis, there are known standard um, relations for metallic systems like Dibensent, uh, Brunson's Evans, Poliani principle, but they were found to be not very accurate for those systems. And that's why instead of uh, using uh, those relations, we used CISO models for these three guys uh, based on uh, features of uh, atoms bulk and hosted for this uh, materials of, uh, forming the single atom and the whole host material. So obtained CISO descriptors and uh, performed the screening of more than, uh, of actually about 500, uh, sorry, 5,200 uh, different combinations, of all possible combinations of uh, these D elements, like host plus guest. And uh, basically the table based on which we predicted about uh, 200 new uh, previously unreported uh, single uh, atom catalysts. Most uh, kind of respectful of them are these two guys, manganese in uh, silver, platinum in zinc. But also here in this plot with a red dot, uh, dots are shown the uh, materials which have been uh, studied experimentally. And some of them were found to be unstable. And this actually perfectly matches our, uh, our calculations uh, in which we found that the segregation energies are positive. It means that uh, the single atom diffuses inside of the bulk and that's why catalyst is unstable. Okay, one more project uh, uh, I would uh, tell you about. It was actually performed in a Bascat lab, uh, which is the joint lab between uh, BSF chemical company and uh, Technical University of Berlin. So this is about oxidative coupling of methane. I guess most of you know that methane is the uh, uh, main component of the natural gas. And uh, basically this reaction or same reaction is the direct way of conversion of methane with oxygen from the air uh, to C2 products, ethylene, first of all, and ethane. So basically this reaction allows us uh, to synthesize some useful chemicals like polyethylene, other polymers from the natural gas kind of in, uh, starting from this reaction. Also, uh, kind of previously this was considered as a reaction as kind of the way for liquefaction of methane with its further transportation over the sea, but actually nowadays it's not considered anymore. Okay, uh, the problem of this reaction is uh, that it uh, proceeds under quite high temperatures so that a lot of methane is just burned to CO2, which is an um, undesired uh, product. Uh, and uh, that's why the yields are not that high. So to be economically rentable, uh, one would need to have C2 yields, it means yields of uh, the C2 products out of methane above uh, 30%. But uh, it, uh, may, uh, this happens also a reaction on oxides catalyst because we have a lot of oxygen which oxidizes everything, also the catalyst. But the point uh, is that, okay, we have uh, oxides and we have CO2 they can form carbonates, right? And probably these carbonates can or play some role in uh, this reaction. This uh, idea was checked by my colleagues, Schmack and Kleinert, and they found that indeed, yes, good, well-performing OCM uh, catalysts, they uh, should be able to form thermodynamically stable carbonates. Okay, so uh, based on this uh, funding, finding, uh, we, um, performed some experiments in which we uh, have taken some carbonates supported by oxides materials and tested them, first of all, in a selenium reaction and second, using uh, thermogrammetry analysis. And kind of matching uh, the results, we found that indeed there is a volcano, so-called volcano-like dependence of C2 yields 
on the composition temperatures of those carbonates. So that means that well-performing uh, well performing material, or same materials should uh, have formation edges of carbonates in a pretty uh, small region. And uh, the interpretation on atomic level of um, this observation is so that basically carbonates uh, here isolate unselective uh, uh, sites, which means that uh, CO2 is produced during the reaction in a way, and then CO2 is absorbed on uh, low coordinated sites, which are responsible for burning of uh, methane to CO2, whereas the rest of the surface is bare, and that's why still we have a kind of high conversion. But on the other hand, selectivity is preserved. So this is for good uh, catalysts. Okay, now uh, this means that uh, if we know uh, formation energies of carbonates or decomposition temperatures of carbonates, then it means we can tune, design new uh, catalysts for this reaction of methane conversion. How uh, can we um, find them? Actually, in the literature, there are not so many experimental data about the composition of carbonates. But we can actually do simulations, find this uh, from our atomic level calculations. So here we developed uh, one method for uh, calculations of formation in these carbonates, which is based so that for given material, we construct several uh, uh, surfaces with different structure, find CO2 adsorption energies, and sample this CO2 adsorption energies according to Boltzmann distribution of formation energies of those materials. So Boltzmann distribution implies that um, surfaces should, be, should have a unique structure, and this uniqueness uh, we checked using, for example, many body tensor representation, but here any other representation can be used, like um, Coulomb matrix, which was uh, mentioned yesterday, soap, so whichever you want, actually. Now we checked first uh, the validation of our method with respect to well-known carbonates like uh, sodium carbonate, uh, calcium carbonate, some chalk, uh, soda, and so on and so forth, for which we have well-measured thermodynamic data, and we found that indeed uh, there is pretty uh, reasonable correlation between experiments and our calculated data with uh, error roughly 20 kilojoules per mole. Actually, I should say that uh, also we uh, try this method for other uh, things like Hook formation in um, electrochemistry oxygen evolution reaction and found that, yeah, it also works in uh, other applications kind of suggesting good uh, match between experiments and uh, the calculations. Also can be used for hydrates uh, formation. Okay, so, but now uh, coming back to OCM, uh, this means, uh, so we did the same for materials which we studied here. Again, pretty good match is one of fire. But uh, now we can uh, predict, uh, means uh, CO2 yields based on this our DFT calculated uh, quantity. So in order to uh, make the screening of many, many materials, still uh, to calculate for each of them the CO2 adsorption sampling according to Boltzmann distribution is quite expensive. That's why we used here some AI methods. I mean, again, subgroup discovery. Oh, <laughs> looks not very good. So this slightly different quality function. Um, and uh, so that uh, we found the subgroups of materials which have formation edges of carbonates closer to the top of volcano. And for more accurate uh, predictions of um, this Formation energies also used CISO within the subgroup. So uh, primary features were atomic features of materials and features of uh, bulk materials themselves. With this equipment, we have performed the high throughput screening. So the screening was done for DFT calculated materials. So we uh, uh, used here open quantum materials database, QMD, which uh, at the moment when we did the screening contained uh, above 800,000 uh, calculated materials. Nowadays, <coughs> this number is already above million. So why actually we uh, screened uh, computed materials and not ones which have been um, synthesized? Because the number of computed materials is uh, roughly, I mean, in this database, roughly three times more than the number of materials in uh, organic uh, uh, chemical solids database. 
the largest database of synthesized materials. This means that we have more calculated materials than the materials which have been uh, ever synthesized. Okay, so our screening actually included uh, two parts. First, uh, selection criteria are requirements based on uh, general knowledge. For example, we don't want that our materials would have uh, radioactive elements in order to, they could find some application. Also, um, they should be stable. And another uh, type of criteria are basically our AI models, uh, I mean, subgroup discovery and our this symbolic regression CSO models. And for more accurate uh, predictions, we also used uh, active uh, learning concept. So out of this uh, more than 800,000 uh, materials, the screening uh, delivered us about 30 uh, yet unstudied, completely new uh, materials, which according to our expectations should be good in the same reaction. So next uh, step in collaboration with uh, some people from um, the industry, uh, some of these materials uh, have been synthesized, both materials which are good according to our expectations 30, and those which are according to our expectations not bad, and measured. And here's the result of the measurement, that first of all, we uh, obtain, uh, still obtain this volcano dependence, means that our method is validated <coughs> for the uh, wide range of materials. But more important is that some of uh, good materials out of this 30, for example, this guy was found to outperform, meaning to be better than, for example, this material, uh, which have been studied in this OCM communities, community since 20 years. So, so to say classical OCM materials. So this, we could outperform this. But what uh, is also interesting is that this our new material is not available in uh, the database of since uh, this I see uh, the database of synthesized materials. Can you wrap it up, please? Yeah. So probably we uh, <laughs> synthesized this material for the first time and it was found to be good for our reasons. Okay. Yeah. Let me conclude. Uh, so here we uh, kind of developed descriptor based. Um, did a uh, DVM DFT search strategy, which was uh, used for the search for new catalytic materials for CO2 uh, activation, hydrogen uh, activation, and sensitive coupling of methane. New materials were proposed, some of them were synthesized and successfully validated. So, I want to acknowledge uh, some of my colleagues, collaborators, both from the academia and from the industry, and you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe we could have one, one quick question. There's a question in there. Okay. Behind you. Uh, thank you for the uh, interesting talk. I wonder about the uh, calculation of frequency in your models. Do, do you need to calculate frequency for these complex models and how long it takes? So, sorry, which frequency are you talking about? Uh, vibrational frequency because of the thermodynamics and... <laughs> Uh, no, we did not calculate, uh, right, uh, we do not calculate vibrational frequencies. Uh, first of all, for solid materials, uh, so we have um, on, uh, one uh, side of um, chemical equation, solid materials on the other side. And it's kind of known since 90s that their difference and the vibration contributions to enthalpy, entropy are negligible. So we can uh, simply throw away. Regarding, for example, CO2, we have taken the um, chemical potentials from, uh, exp uh, from the um, experimental uh, studies from the literature. Okay, maybe one more question. Okay, if not, please join me in thanking uh, Alexia Ogin. Okay.